Welcome to Engineering a UAV Drone Swarm Week 11. In this series, I'm bringing you along on developing a UAV like I just said, and I'm only 19 years old. But first, I want to give you a quick recap of what we did in this series up to now. We created a custom PCB and decided how it should work. We are making a simulation to see if we can make offline positioning work based on image comparison and maybe in combination with an inertial navigation unit. We did tons and tons of research in a lot of topics to understand what direction to go to as a project like this has a lot of variables. We looked into toroidal propellers, combustion versus electric motors, motor configurations and so much more. We learned how to work with NASA's OpenVSP and how we can use it to make quick and smart iterations on different plane designs. We looked into how we can manage a large group of volunteers to do something this complex together. And by the way, all of these people came from this YouTube channel. They all signed up and you guys can too with the link in the description. And it's just amazing what can be done. If all of this is interesting to you, feel free to just binge watch all of the episodes where I'm giving a realistic look in all of this. And that is also really good for my views. Um, last video, we were making a Discord bot to manage the volunteers properly. We decided to separate two kinds of volunteers, the determined ones and the people that mostly like to talk. The Discord bot will allow people to prove themselves to join the determined group because keeping the determined group rather small allows for easy communication, knowing what you can expect of people, and nobody can bring the team off topic and stuff like that. This video, we're going over multiple Multiple things. Firstly, I will show you the Discord bot that Lathe is making for us. Big shout out to him to achieve what I just said. Then I will go over our progress with the Aero team and finally coming with some tangible ideas on how we should design the UAV aerodynamically. We will do a trade study to achieve that and I will tell you all about that. And lastly, we will go over some things with the PCB that Xenos is making. Also a big shout out to Xenos, he has been doing a lot of work. All the timestamps to these topics should be in the description so you can just watch the parts that interest you and let's get started. What's up guys? Last video I was talking about making a separate fan server with contributors. You can sign up to contribute and then you can do some simpler tasks like you get coins for each task and then if you have enough coins you can upgrade to the level 2 contributor server and there you get to do some real big things. Now we are doing this to make sure that we have a server with much more determined people so we know who to depend on and communication is way easier if you have a smaller amount of people that are still doing a lot so that's why we kind of put that in that means that if you don't have as much time you can also just do the simpler tasks and with those coins you can also buy things like the sneak peeks that you can get on patreon as well um, you can get a shout out in the video stuff like that it's pretty nice so I made a plan because someone reached out to me late and he just said, yo, I made the bot. Here's the link to the server. So I joined the server and the bot worked. <laughs> it was exactly how I described it. Um, it wasn't as extensive just yet because I had a lot of other things I wanted the bot to do. But everything I mentioned in last video, he just made it already. Like <laughs> I was very impressed. Now, before I show you that, um, when he showed me that, I was like, oh, wait, I need to make a proper plan because I wanted to do that either way. Um, I need to make a proper plan for what I want the Discord bot to do. So first of all, there's like three categories. First of all is tasks, managing tasks, making them, um, how it all works. Like if you say that you want to join as a member, that you get put in a channel, stuff like that. You got activity to make sure that we know if someone's active or not. And we have economy, which is those coins that I talked about. So I didn't write down stuff yet about these two, but for the tasks I did. First of all, command. By using a command, a team leader can make a new task and give the title, description, deadline, and the amount of people needed. Make a YouTube video description. Make a YouTube video showing how the new Discord bot works. And upload it Sunday or Monday. I'm sorry if I am late, guys. <laughs> Manpower means how many people will be assigned to the task. I'm going to put one because that's me. And the duration will be, I don't know, three days, something like that. And then you just click enter. The bot makes an embedded message giving the title, description, blah, blah, blah deadline, coins, you'll get instructions to react with a uh, check emoji to join and a task ID to refer to the task easily later. So as you can see right here in the task channel, you can see this. Now, as you can see for the task, 
looks pretty good it even says who created the task and uh, the people needed the deadline the reward uh, the deadline is in a date which is nice and like even a task id is added now he already made that so let's go to the juicy part if someone joins by hitting the emoji the bot will automatically put the member in a separate channel or thread along with the other people that joined and it should also say like hey what everyone new member let's talk together um, and the member is given a busy role so that we know that they are working on something so then if you click join boom oh my god I forgot to disable this bot. But as you can see, it automatically adds me to the manpower needed, one out of one. And if I remove it, well, fuck, there's a bug. Uh, that's probably because of, um... wait, let me just try that again, okay? <laughs> All right, 2.0, so I click join, and then I unclick it, and then bleep, 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 bleep. Okay, that needs some fixing. Anyways, um... <laughs> That used to work before, uh, that's kind of my bad. Uh, anyways, so when you finish, you can just click complete and it does boom, thank you for your work. And then if I do balance, I currently have 50 coins. And if I do this one complete as well, and I do balance, then you can see, and now I got 60 coins. So it adds up the coins as well, so that all works. So that's absolutely amazing. I was gonna go over everything else I had planned for the bot, but I realized it's way more interesting to just show the thing working in action, and everything you just saw is what we already have working, so there's not really much more to show. So in the upcoming videos, I will just show you some things that we have added and that are working so that you guys still get the idea uh, without it being boring. But guys, some good news because I am opening up the fan server this video so you guys can go in the description or in the comments and you can join this server and you can just talk in general or do discussions or give suggestions. Uh, you can see how to join the team and some like nice like the benefits and uh, the wall of fame and the introduction. I don't know stuff like that. I made it all so the bot is not done yet. So the contribution system is not yet finished. So we will start still do it the old way but you guys can at least join and talk so that's really nice now something else real quick we kind of went off topic in the off topic channel i mean that's what it's for and i remembered this boar vessel meme <laughs> i don't know why i found it funny other girls perfect hair perfect makeup superficial i was looking for mill approval me boar vessel nice 500 to 600 bc Ooh, etruscan how do you even say that i don't know ceramic Damn, hell yeah. You versus the guy she told you not to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to say about this. Sometimes what a person needs is just one piece. The boar vessel 600, 500 BC Etruscan cer ceramic. If a boar vessel 600 to 500 BC Etruscan ceramic wore pants, would he wear them like this or like this? Let me know in the comments. This is A, this is B, right? I think we all agreed with two. The entire server was voting on how a board vessel should wear its pants. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just don't ask. Just, just don't, don't ask. And then Dr. Tenma, the legend he is, why not have it printed as an inside joke on the PCB we design? I'm sold. Xenos, we need boar vessel 500 to 600 BC Etruscan ceramic on the PCB. All right, say less. Boar vessel is making it onto the Navius Aero Core. <laughs> for people without humor, it's good for marketing. Elon Musk does it too. I actually love that. I like having like some <laughs> Easter eggs and stuff like that. And Xenos is a man of his word. So here it is. The boar vessel on the Navius Aero Core PCV. Now this is a dev board that he made. So um, we're going to get this made. And he can solder on some of the uh, components. And we can test out the firmware, which is also apparently nearly completed by the software development team. Big, big shout out to the entire software development team. There's a whole GitHub repo that they made where they're coding and stuff I don't understand anything about, but they're the most active department by far. Uh, and I really appreciate them for that. So definitely special shout out to Xenos and Wage because They've been the team leader of that and they've all been active and just everyone. Okay, just thank you. So this is great. 
Now besides that, I did ask the aero department to do something because I thought maybe I should like just get them going a bit. It was a bit inactive so I thought we really should make some, some progress because my issue is that I am not making tangible progress and there's no tangible results. So basically what I asked them to do well, first I had a call with uh, Jonathan. He told me the right steps to take to figure out where to go from there. And he told me we should first get a rough idea on what the plane should be, what the design should be. And then we can iterate on that and make it like more clear. It's like taking a blurry image and unblurring it. You know, you still need the blurry image first before making a proper design. So it's a long story about what I asked exactly, but basically the Aero team did a lot of progress within a deadline I gave for the first time I gave a deadline, I think. Um, and they figured out what plane designs fit our needs and how well, like it's a bit hard to explain, but for example, maximum lift to drag ratio would be minus one on a biplane, one on a monoplane, one on a flying wing and zero on a tandem wing. So these are like grades on how well they would perform in that section. Um, and with these grades, we can basically take a random plane design and grade the plane design based on these criteria. And we have weights set out. So how much these numbers matter. And then based on all that, we give the entire plane design a grade like this. And the numbers have been raised to show the differences easier. Now, what we found, we kind of wanted to create a rating to make sure that we can use this on different plane designs and do some research on different designs and pick the best one. But I think it's pretty clear that the monoplane, the traditional good old plane design is the best. Look at this number. It's 9.3 as opposed to 3.5 for the flying wing, which is also pretty good, but this is even better. The biplane is really bad. And these criteria are all tailored to our needs for our UAV, what did I just do? So yeah, we did this for the wing configuration, for the tail configuration, for the lift motor configuration and the wing location configuration. And I did not even see this. Bro, he's determined as hell. Oh yeah, this is what Jonathan also explained, though I still do not fully understand these things yet. They're a little bit complex for me to break down. It's just very good stuff, as I can tell. I'm going to ask uh, someone to explain this a little bit better to me. I know maybe I'm a bit stupid, but this just looks complex and I don't fully grasp it yet. Uh, but I do grasp this, so that's something. Okay, so the wing configuration, best one is monoplane. Tail configuration, best one is conventional. Lift motor configuration, the best one is quad flat. So for the motors, so four motors in a flat configuration and no ducts, nothing. Wing location configuration is the high wing or the low wing. It is a very small difference. We need to find out, uh, by the way, if you did not know, uh, the higher the wing, I believe, the more stable. I will give you an interesting uh, fact. So, you know, some planes, so some planes have like, this is a fuselage and they have high wings for stability, but that makes it too stable. So then they make wings that go like this. I know you've seen this before on like huge planes because having a negative dihedral, I think that's what it's called, like having it pitched down a bit makes it less stable. And you actually want that for planes with a high wing and like planes that are too stable because otherwise you cannot control them. Instability does not mean that it's uncontrollable. It actually means it's very controllable, I believe, because on fighter jets, they are considered very unstable because the um, because of many reasons, basically, and that they have that because they need to be very controllable, obviously. Making it hard to fly in a stable, straight manner, which this plane would be very good at. So I think a way to counter the instability of a plane, you would have a dihedral that goes like upwards, like a Boeing. And also the place where you put the wing, if it's high or low, also makes it more or less stable and some other stuff. A dihedral like this also, it makes it more stable, I believe, because um, like if there is a wind gust and this wing is pushed down, so this wing gets pushed up like this, then then I kind of, uh, to be honest, I forgot how it works, but it was something with this side of the wing not like producing enough lift so that the plane turns itself back to being straight and level. But I kind of forgot how that works. It could have to do with like 
angle of attack or something? I don't know. Uh, maybe I should not be giving you lessons about planes. But yeah, there's dihedrals are very interesting. Um, same with a lot of other aspects that we need more clarity on to fully determine how we should configure the drone. Now for that, we would like to use OpenVSP, test some stuff in there, and then we can find out the perfect dihedral, the aspect ratio, all of that. So that's what we're going to be doing soon. This week, I think we're still going into some more of the case studies to figure out more dihedral and lift location stuff and then try it in OpenVSP. After trying everything in OpenVSP, we will go and probably build a CAD model out of that and then do proper CFD testing. I think that's the most logical step after that, but I will have to ask around to be sure that that's the best idea. Now, by the way, I know last video I've not talked about the PU foam mold that I was making. The mold is finished and it looks like this. It's like half a mold basically. And this area would be PU foam. Now, based on earlier tests, I found out a few things, uh, which I'm yet to show you when I'm going to use this mold. But basically, all in all, I'm not sure if this is the best idea. I know you guys saw it coming already, so I'm sorry. It's, it's sad that I have to say and like that I was wrong, but uh, it's good that we tested it. Um, it's still some interesting stuff, so that video will be interesting. I think I will show you that next video when I also tested this mold. Um, what is the next step if this does not work? Uh, it will probably be fiberglass. It seems to be a good combination with um, between weight and strength and cost. So then I guess we're going to be back to making molds. Hopefully though, by that time, we might even have a plane design set out. So maybe we can also like test it with the actual design. We do want to make a half skill prototype with uh, off the shelf items. So if we have this model done, then we can finally find those items and make it actually work. There's also a few other super exciting things going on with funding that I cannot disclose right now, I think. But yeah, you guys will see. If you guys want to join the server, you're very welcome. If you guys want to contribute, you're also very, very welcome. Big shout out to everyone that has been helping and I'll see you in the next video.